Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for attending today's webinar on the Midwest Drives Initiative. My name is Matt Stevens Rich, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the various clean city coalitions that are a part of this program. I'm with Clean Fuels Ohio, uh, based out of Columbus, Ohio. But as you can see before you, we have a number of other uh, clean city coalitions across the Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan area that are also part of the program. So a quick overview of uh, Midwest Drives and also uh, uh, just some general housekeeping as well as we do go through the presentation. Uh, for those of you not familiar with GoToWebinar, there is a questions tab where you can submit any written questions uh, that you might have as the presentation is going on. I'll just be logging them at, throughout the presentation and then at the end I'll uh, be able to provide some insight to any uh, questions. Andrew Conley, who is uh, the program director for Clean Fuels Ohio, is also on this webinar broadcast as well, and will also be able to chime in on any questions as well. We also will be recording this webinar for later broadcast, and also have the slides available as well, just to FYI for everyone. So, the Midwest Drives Initiative is a U.S. Department of Energy funded program. Uh, we were able to seek grant funding through the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy underneath the Alternative Fuel Vehicle Deployment Initiative. And so this program is designed to be a free vehicle demonstration to both public and private fleets across Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. And what also makes uh, an, as an added value is also data logging during these vehicle demonstrations, which allows for the generation of case study after the demonstration is over, that provides an apples to apples comparison for alternative fuels to traditional vehicles. And so the general process for a fleet to uh, sign up and register with the program is first and foremost, uh, just go to midwestdrives.org and that is where you can find the enrollment form for fleets. After enrolling, we would look to finalize vehicles and fueling needs for demonstrations with fleets. This would be conducted by a follow-up phone call from Clean City staff, schedule time for the vehicle demonstration, and deploy the vehicle demonstration with data logging. And in terms of uh, time scheduling, this will be often a fleet-by-fleet -fleet case basis. So depending on what type of vehicle you'd be looking to demonstrate, we would like to work with you, work with the vehicle provider, and, and create the best arrangement for vehicle availability for demonstration. And then after the vehicle deployment, we would create the case studies that would be able to be shared with the fleet as well as uh, shared with the general program that helps generate a, a great case study base for these different types of vehicles that will be deployed. So again, all this can be found at midwestdrives.org. And for Midwest Drives Initiative, there are a number of project partners that are able to make this uh, happen. Uh, those project partners are various clean city coalitions within Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. Uh, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL, is also uh, helping out with the initiative on the case study generation, helping provide guidance. The National Truck Equipment Association, NTEA, they are helping uh, with soliciting fleets and, and encouraging for outreach. The National Association for Fleet Administration, NAFA, also is another partner that we're gladly working with in Midwest Drives. And then Fleet Karma is the supplier of data loggers for the program. And then we also do have the various vehicle providers as well. So a very quick overview of those clean city coalitions that are a part of the program. It, in Indiana, there's the Greater Indiana Clean Cities Coalition and South Shore Clean Cities. In Michigan, the Clean Energy Coalition is helping represent clean cities. And then in Ohio, there's Clean Fuels Ohio and Earth Day Coalition. So these would be your respective uh, go-to contacts in each, each area. I'll be providing uh, contacts for each of those coalitions on the last slide. That way, you'll be able to get in touch with your respective Clean City Coalition for scheduling. So from here, let's go into the different types of vehicles and fuels that are part of the program. Uh, so we have just over 20 vehicle providers offering over 40 different types of vehicles. 
And the really exciting thing about this program is that we're able to encompass a wide variety of fuels, class sizes, and vehicle types. So for fuels, we are including biofuels, uh, CNG, electric vehicles, efficiency technologies, hybrid technologies, both on the hydraulic and electric side, and propane. And then for class sizes, uh, varying applications across light, medium, and heavy duty. So we are talking from a Nissan Leaf all the way up to a Class 8 tractor in terms of application. And we also do have a number of specialty vehicles also a part of the program, such as police interceptors, uh, refuse trucks, school buses, and many more. We won't be encompassing the full list in this presentation because, quite frankly, they would not neatly fit on one slide, but you can find the full list at midwestdrives.org. So one thing to also broach uh, right out of the gate is in terms of alternative fuel refueling. Uh, if you think about it, this is an alternative fuel demonstration program, but it, it can be difficult to demonstrate a fuel if it's not readily available. So uh, in anticipation of this, uh, the Midwest Drives Initiative has begun making arrangements with local refueling suppliers, uh, both through propane, biofuels, and CNG. And so bear in mind, each demonstration will be subject to fuel option availability. Uh, the good news is we have a lot of very eager partners that are willing to make uh, these demonstrations happen and, and will strive to make it happen. But also bear in mind, uh, you know, sometimes we will be just limited by availability, such as on the CNG side. If, if there's not an easily accessible uh, CNG station, that might make it a little bit difficult for a demonstration. But we're happy to work with any and all interested fleets to see what type of arrangement can be made. So from here, let's do a quick overview of different types of fuels and a little bit more delving into the different vehicle classes available, as well as the benefits and best fit uh, applications as you're perusing the list of all available technologies. So to start things off with biofuels, uh, vehicle classes available for the biofuels technology is medium and heavy duty. And for biofuels, often the, the most cited benefits are fuel cost savings compared to diesel. The good news is uh, within Midwest Drives, the biofuel supplier that we would look to work with has already made a, a cost arrangement that would allow for a cheaper than diesel uh, price per gallon, which which would is fantastic for the demonstration and, and something to bear in mind. Uh, biofuel also does uh, show for a reduced life cycle emission compared to diesel. And then also it's very simple refueling. Uh, in essence, what you're doing is swapping out uh, your biofuel, you know, biodiesel for diesel refueling, but the good news is it doesn't require too much retraining or, or any other additional considerations for drivers on the refueling. For best fit applications, uh, municipal fleets, heavy duty fleets, regional distribution companies, and construction companies are all ideal fleets for venturing this technology. Uh, also, another thing that isn't listed here is uh, the biofuel system that is a part of Midwest Drives is actually a bi-fuel type system. So it, it's able to work in tandem with a diesel uh, uh, diesel supply. So in essence, you are mixing biodiesel and diesel together during the vehicle operation. So uh, it's a very exciting technology and one that is especially great for those best fit applications listed here. So next up is compressed natural gas. This is a very popular uh, fuel, both in the private and public sector, and is very well represented within Midwest Drives. Uh, we do have vehicle classes across light, medium, and heavy duty available. For benefits, there is a general lower fuel cost associated with CNG. There's also dedicated and by fuel availability, uh, depending on the vehicle that you're interested in pursuing for demonstration. Like I mentioned before, by fuel, all that means is uh, it's CNG running alongside diesel, so it allows for uh, a hybrid approach, if you will. There's also reduced life cycle emissions and similar engine performance with CNG operation. And then for best fit applications, Class 8 fleets are often a, a top candidate, as well as municipal fleets. Utility and vocational fleets also often find uh, good utilization for the fuel. 
and also just any general fleets that are nearby existing CNG stations. Also something worth mentioning, photos featured uh, on each of these respective slides are representative of the types of vehicles that are in the program. So uh, if you see a picture and you say, ooh, that is a really good vehicle, I'd really like to demonstrate that. The good news is this is a literal vehicle that is participating within the program. Next up for efficiency, uh, this is a unique application that, that we're really excited to also be offering. Typically, uh, for alternative fuels, the focus is on the physical fuels, but there is still plenty to be gained in terms of simple efficiency uh, gains that can be added into the vehicles. So vehicle classes available here are, again, light, medium, and heavy duty. Uh, and in terms of the benefits, the way that this is broken down, we have an engine computer recalibration company called Derive Systems that's a part of the program. Uh, what they do is recalibrate the engine computer to run more efficiently at idle, as well as reduce acceleration curves and, and so forth. So uh, the good news is they are able to conduct this within the vehicle warranty. So it's, it's not uh, tinkering with the engine computer that might void a warranty or cause additional concern. Uh, and also this idle reduction tinkering also helps save fuel. Additionally, there's no additional fueling infrastructure needed, as again, this focus is on the efficiency technology itself. We also do have a uh, uh, banner fo photo featured here, which also is an idle reduction technology that's able to help accomplish similar results. And in terms of best fit applications, high idling fleets are going to be a big focus for this, uh, such as law enforcement or worksite vehicles. Those vehicles that need to be remain in idle for their operation, municipal and vocational fleets, and then also fleets focused on improving driver behavior and safety. As uh, when you think through the advantage of reducing an acceleration curve on an engine computer, that's a way to help make sure that drivers are not uh, putting themselves in a dangerous scenario by uh, over accelerating the vehicle. So next up, we have electric vehicles. Uh, vehicle classes available are light duty for auto, pickup, and van. And then we also do have uh, medium duty utility bucket truck also available. For benefits, uh, lower fuel costs in general, as well as zero tailpipe emissions and quiet operation. And also recharging of electric vehicles is a very easy process. For best fit applications, uh, fleets with pool vehicles, such as those that might be dedicated to commuting from site to site, uh, municipal fleets and utility and vacational fleets are also uh, really good fits for this type of application. Next up is hybrid. Uh, for these vehicle class availability, we have medium and heavy duty. For the benefits, there's no additional infrastructure needed, similar to efficiency technology. This is focused on uh, adding on technology onto the vehicle. It provides improved fuel economy, and electric and hydraulic options are available. Uh, these, both these pictures to the right are both hydraulic ap applications, actually. So for best fit applications, transportation services, heavy city traffic fleets, as uh, these hybrid vehicles really find their niche operation in heavy stop and go operation and municipal fleets, including refuse as well. And then to round things out, uh, propane is another fuel also available. Vehicle classes available in this segment are light and medium duty. For benefits, there's a lower fuel cost, easy refueling infrastructure, uh, especially in terms of being able to arrange for refueling during demonstration as it's a much more mobile fuel for refueling. Similar engine performance and lower emission and maintenance costs. Uh, best fit applications in this case will be school bus fleets. We do have uh, two school buses that will be participating. Uh, for municipal fleets, utility and vacational fleets, and law enforcement, this is also a great application. Uh, especially on the law enforcement side. That is a, a definite niche that is covered within the program. So to move on, 
uh, to just go a little bit more into the data logging and how that will play into the demonstrations. The data loggers will be installed on demonstration vehicles to capture baseline data on vehicle operations during the demo period. Uh, in general, the type of data that is being collected for the case studies is vehicle speed, miles per gallon, RPM. There is also a, a GPS feature as well that can be used uh, for helping show improved performance on uh, highways or in city traffic, what have you. Uh, after the demo, customized case studies will be made available to fleets. And the whole drive of this is it's an ability to compare your routes with your drivers on alternative fuel vehicles versus conventional vehicle performance. Uh, you know, all too often uh, we hear of case studies or, or claims on. Uh, fuel savings or, or uh, similar engine performance, but the, the drive of the data logging is to help verify that with a very customized approach, being able to use your own application. Uh, it, we also will be able to provide access to the Fleet Karma dashboard during demonstration. This is just a simple uh, way to read out the telemetry data that is coming out of the demonstration. And on the next slide here, I actually have a couple screenshots of what that looks like. So uh, for instance, on the far left-hand side here, uh, you have a vehicle that's providing general distance data coming out, driver efficiency, such as miles per gallon and fuel usage, and idle summary, time of operation. And uh, in the middle, you can see a Nissan Leaf photoed there. And uh, there's even further customized data available with electric vehicles, such as time of day during charging, how much charge was built up, so the, it's a very robust system that's able to capture a lot of good data for these case studies that really will help lend a lot of insight to these demonstrations. And so for eligible fleets, private and public uh, fleets in Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan are all eligible. So the good news is if you are a fleet, you are able to be within the program as long as you are able to be within those three states. Uh, the things to also bear in mind here as you're gauging participation is uh, all eligibility is subject to vehicle provider agreements and specific terms. So uh, fleets must accept liability for demo vehicles while in its operation and possession. Uh, fleets must allow demo vehicle data logging and sharing of information on demo vehicle performance with the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, this is in the interest of the case study generation, and fleets must sign demo agreements detailing specifics outlined above. And this is uh, all details that we're happy to walk through with uh, interested fleets. The interest is in making this a streamlined process as, as easy to navigate as possible. So uh, definitely with that interest in mind, we're happy to answer any and all questions. So we really encourage everyone to enroll today. Uh, like I've presented at the onset, uh, simple steps in order for enrollment. All you have to do is go to midwestdrives.org. Uh, there's an enrollment form link down at the bottom of the page. Just click on that. It provides basic detail and information for us to be able to follow up with you on and help schedule a time for vehicle demonstration. Once that's scheduled and once we have everything arranged, we deploy the vehicle demonstration with data logging. And then as the demonstration wraps up, we create the case study that is allowed to be shared with uh, your fleet. And we're able to have greater insight to the vehicle operation and, and hopefully able to lend some more data to the discussion. So that really draws to a close the presentation. All contacts uh, you see here are broken down by each respective Clean Cities Coalition in each state. Uh, some of you might be aware of your nearest Clean City Coalition, but if not, uh, fear not, just go ahead and reach out to one that might be within your respective area, and we're happy to connect you up with the needed resources. So with that, uh, I'll go ahead and go into the questions section and allow some time for folks to type out any questions that they might have. So go ahead and ask any questions.
So one question coming out is how long do you keep the vehicles for demo? And this is going to vary depending on the vehicle. Uh, some vehicles will be deployed for as uh, for a longer period of time, uh, such as uh, a month or two. Others are focused on uh, a week or two weeks of deployment. So that is something that we would uh, seek to work with on the vehicle provider. Uh, the way that many vehicle providers have framed it, in order to get a good demonstration, some uh, simply just need a week of operation. Others need a little bit longer or a little bit less. So that's something that we'd be able to uh, answer and work through with you depending on the vehicle that you are interested in. Another question is how long will the program last? The program will run through to mid next year actually. So uh, it will be running through out 2016 and then the first half of 2017. One thing to emphasize, as I mentioned before, is vehicle availability uh, does uh, change as the program proceeds forward. Some vehicle providers are able to lend a vehicle for certain durations throughout this time period. So that will be, uh, uh, again, something that we'll just work with the fleets on, depending on the type of vehicle they're interested in. Another question is, what level of city approval do you require to fill out an application? Uh, this is something that we would look to the respective uh, cities to uh, have guidance on. Uh, in terms of our process, we want to be sure that uh, all stakeholders and all needed, uh, all needed personnel are a part of that decision. So that's something uh, that we're happy to be on a phone call or, or assist in providing more detail on the program to anyone else that might be needed to make that decision. But ultimately, we would look to uh, the respective municipality for what uh, level of, of say they feel is needed to move forward. So we are happy to work through that with you. Another question coming through uh, is with regards to refueling infrastructure and how that will be arranged. Uh, this is going to be a case-by-case -case basis, so we would look to work with the fleet and get in contact with possible fueling providers for the demonstration and use that as our uh, plan of attack for seeing what can be arranged. There will be some instances where it might not be possible to have a fuel available, but we do have a number of partners, especially on the biofuels and propane and CNG side that are willing to try to make uh, something available. Bearing that in mind, such as a CNG application, that typically is going to be a demonstration that would only be able to 
occur with existing infrastructure already uh, available nearby. Another question is on maintenance and service. Who provides uh, that for the duration of the program? Uh, this is something most vehicle providers are going to be taking care of, so that is not going to be a concern to uh, fleets. And the, as each vehicle uh, is deployed to the fleet, each fleet will sign a, an agreement, and there uh, are a couple of vehicles that might need an oil change or something during the duration of the demo, but that would be something that we would definitely talk through in the run-up to the uh, agreement being signed. But for the most part, that is uh, not going to be something that the fleets are going to need to have concern with. Another question is on what criteria is there for being selected to host a demonstration? Uh, again, this is open to all public and private fleets and uh, within vehicle availability as, as fueling is available as well, we are happy to work with each fleet. So uh, the criteria is something that we're, we would talk through with each fleet and, and see what type of arrangement could be made. So uh, definitely go ahead and jump onto the enrollment form, get in contact with your local Clean Cities Coalition, and we can get the process started. Question on the, if the presentation will be posted. Indeed, it will be posted. Uh, it's also being recorded, so we will post the uh, live webinar as well as the presentation slides. Uh, after this presentation. You'll be able to find that at midwestdrives.org, and I will also uh, try to link that to this webinar as well on the GoToWebinar website as well. Question on if program requirements are consistent across Midwest states. Uh, indeed, it will be consistent across all, all the states. Uh, we would just look to sign that fleet agreement with each respective fleet. But in terms of if there's any specialty requirements in Ohio versus Michigan or Indiana, uh, that's not the case. It, it will be open to any and all. A question on if there's a cutoff time for an application and at what point does the application become non-competitive. Uh, it's open to applications are accepted throughout the duration of the program. Uh, we would encourage any interested fleets to submit sooner rather than later, uh, especially as uh, vehicle availability will change throughout the program. Uh, that simply is that some vehicles may not be available for a three month period or only available during this period. So. Uh, it's good to have you on our radar uh, early on. That way we can be sure to schedule the most effective demonstration and maximize uh, vehicle availability for your demonstration. One question is how do you provide access to data? Data will be collected by uh, or through the Fleet Karma devices and will be hosted on the Fleet Karma website through a user login. So you would be able to access the data during the demonstration on the Fleet Karma website, and then afterwards uh, we would take that data and be able to use that for the case study as well. A question on upfitting of vehicles for demonstration. There are a number of fueling systems within the program that would be an upfit. Uh, and this is uh, something we would work with the fleets on helping detail work with the vehicle provider, the technology provider on detailing as well. So uh, that is, uh, that would just require a little bit more conversation on how to execute that. And uh, any of the Clean City Coalitions are happy to have that conversation. For the most part, they would already be upfitted, however. So that's the uh, good news. 
Another question, if you find an alternative fuel vehicle not on the current list of demos, can I add the vehicle to the program? We gladly uh, would be able to welcome that, pro that vehicle into the program. Uh, just the process for that would be connecting, uh, forward that contact to a respective Clean Cities Coalition, and we can look to work with that vehicle provider uh, on joining into the program. There's a little bit of a process, but we're happy to uh, broach that. Question on how soon can Fleet start the process of application? You can start it uh, today. Just click over to midwestdrives.org and the enrollment form is at the bottom of the page. Uh, a very simple survey, just giving some basic data and then we would be able to follow up with you and begin the scheduling from there. Another question on template fleet agreements for municipalities. Uh, this is something we do actually already have drafted. So uh, it, again, on the fleet uh, agreement for participation, uh, it's something that we do have drafted and uh, already created as a template. It would not be something created from scratch. And it would be uh, a, a document that we'd work through with each respective fleet on. And before uh, folks start logging off, we will also be hosting uh, an event, an informational session at the NTEA Work Truck Show. It'll actually be during, uh, it also coinciding with the Green Truck Summit, March 2nd. And that will be uh, actually in the follow-up email that goes out to all participants. There will be further details there along with the registration for that event. It'll be a free event. We'll have a number of vehicle providers, they're able to mingle with fleets and answer any further questions. We will also be giving this similar presentation there as well, but it'll be another uh, opportunity to learn more about the program. For those also interested in attending, there is a free pass uh, available to the Work Truck Show through the Clean City Coalitions. That detail will also be in the follow-up email that goes out to all attendees. So be sure to keep apprised of your email immediately following this webinar, and all those links will be featured in there. Uh, one question is on, are hydraulic hybrid vehicles eligible for demonstration? We do have a number of hydraulic hybrid vehicles in the program, so the good news is we do have that technology represented. Uh, another question is, are we able to demonstrate more than one vehicle with a fleet? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, that's actually something we heavily encourage because uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to uh, experience a wide variety of technology across both class size and, and fuel types. So uh, definitely we gladly welcome it and are happy to talk more through that. On the uh, survey uh, for enrollment, be sure to indicate uh, the types of vehicles that you're interested in. It, it's a simple breakdown by light, medium, and heavy duty, as well as class size. And uh, go ahead and fill that out. That way it helps give us uh, some more context to the type of vehicle that you're interested in demonstrating. A question on vehicle efficiency, if it is an upfit on an existing fleet vehicle or would there be specific vehicles through the loaner program, it would be an upfit, that is correct. And that is uh, uh, something that we'd work to detail with you and, and connect you with the vehicle provider or the technology provider in this case. Uh, another question is, do we pay for the fuel while using the vehicles? The answer is yes, uh, uh, or depending, depending on the type of uh, technology, uh, that would be something that we'd work out further.
So the answer would be during the demonstration, you would pay for the fuel provided or pay for the fuel. Some more questions on types of vehicles available. Again, that full list can be found at midwestdrives.org. Question on propane bus choices available. We do have a Roush uh, Bluebird uh, propane variety available. A question on if examples of a natural gas repower are available in a class six truck to the trial. And we do actually have one uh, vehicle provider that hits roughly close to that. We can talk more about that. Uh, so something that would be pretty close to that type of application. Uh, again, feel free to uh, fill out the survey and we can talk more through that. And that pretty well wraps out the questions currently asked, but we are happy to remain more online. That way, uh, as you're reviewing through the Midwest Drive's website, webpage, if you do have any questions, go ahead and ask them and we're happy to answer. Couple more questions coming through. A uh, question on specifically where do you find the vehicle list on the web page? Uh, if you go to midwestdrives.org, that's a, a redirect to the Clean Fuels Ohio web page dedicated to the Midwest Drives initiative. So uh, that can also uh, be found by clicking on going just to cleanfuelsohio.org and then on the top bar there is a fleet solutions option. Click that and then at the bottom most option will be a Midwest Drives initiative tab. And detailed on that is the table of all vehicles participating in the program. Another question on if what's the cutoff for an application? At what point does the application become non-competitive? Uh, the cutoff will be when the program ends, which it will be mid uh, 2017, so July 2017. However, we do encourage you to uh, apply sooner rather than later. That way we're able to have more uh, of a runway for helping schedule the vehicles and the refueling. And also to reiterate, we will be doing a uh, informational session at the NTA Work Truck Show on March 2nd. All are welcome to attend. Uh, it'll be from two to four, and there it will be free passes available uh, that all that information will be emailed out to all attendees to on this webinar. And also, it's well worth pointing out as well, a couple of those vehicle and technology providers that are part of Midwest Drives will also be vendors at NTEA. So they will be attending our informational session, but they also, some of them will have their vehicles available for ride and drive uh, during the event as well. So it'll be a really good opportunity to check out more of the technology that's available.
I will go ahead and stay on for a couple more minutes here. So if you do have any final questions, go ahead and ask them now. Uh, if not, and you do find that you do have questions once the webinar is over, uh, you can see each respective Clean City Coalition contact listed here. So you, good news is uh, there's a dedicated contact for each respective uh, Clean Cities Coalition. So feel free to reach out and we're happy to have a conversation and get you started with enrollment. Well, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. I'll go ahead and draw it to a close for now, but again, if you do have any follow-up questions, do not hesitate to reach out to your respective Clean City Coalition or visit the Midwest Drives webpage at midwestdrives.org. Uh, we're happy to answer any and all questions and we're eager to work with interested fleets to help get these demonstrations on the road. Again, we're really excited. The program will run throughout 2016 and, and halfway through 2017. July 2017 is the program end date. Uh, but if you are interested, it's better to get the process started sooner rather than later. So go ahead and uh, fill out the enrollment form, get in touch, and we can work with you to schedule the demonstration. So with that, I'll draw it to a close. Thanks again for attending. And uh, all presentation material will be able to be found online afterwards. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.